Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about reproductive barriers. So let's just jump right into it. So there are actually different types of reproductive barriers, but let's just talk about what it is. So first of all, just a reproductive barrier is something that's going to prevent the mating between species. So we're going to get into different types of prevention, but there's two main types, and that is prezygotic and postzygotic barriers. So it's kind of what you think it is. You know, prezygotic means things that are going to happen or prevent um, even the fertilization of an egg. So even before you can get to a zygote, it's prezygotic. And then there's also postzygotic barriers, which are going to prevent um, the production of a fertile offspring. So maybe you can have the formation of the zygote, fertilization of the egg, formation of zygote, and give birth, perhaps. But that offspring may actually not be fertile. So let's just get into the different types now. So let's look at some prezygotic barriers. So the first we're going to look at is gametic or gamete isolation. So essentially, this is where gametes don't meet or uh, they won't necessarily survive in the genitalia. So, you know, there will be like reproduction, like for example, in uh, certain types of urchins um, and several species will, you know, come together and um, you know, the, the males will emit sperm that can enter a female, but if that sperm enters into the wrong species, it will not survive in the genital tract of um, the female of that species. And so it will not fertilize the egg. And so in a sense, this is, it's kind of like a, a reaction from the female gamete to only accept, you know, ga a gamete or, you know, sperm from their own species. So that's how they kind of keep that in line in terms of gametic isolation. There's also spatial isolation here. Uh, and this is where species are isolated by the geography or the location. So some types of animals, <clears throat> such as some certain snakes, they are separated in their location, like uh, by water or different land areas, and so they never actually meet, and therefore they can't mate. So they stay, you know, within their own groups, and that is what spatial isolation is. And there's also mechanical isolation. So this is due to their quote-unquote mechanics. Um, so uh, they just have if you will, mechanical incompatibility. They're, they have different, you know, shapes or sizes or just the formation of their genital area. So they're not compatible with each other. So they're only compatible with, you know, their own species and certain individuals. I believe an example of this could be a snail, a specific snail type um, for mechanical isolation. So let's talk about um, some more prezygotic barriers. We're going to continue here. So we have temporal isolation. So temporal is, that means time. So you want to think of it like um, something about their timing is off. So here it's the isolation of species due to mating seasons. So essentially the time here involves the mating season of that animal. So uh, we mostly see this in plants, but you know, some animals also experience this and some animals might have mating seasons in the spring while others have it in the fall so that makes them you know incompatible for each other and we also have behavioral isolation so this is due to their differing mating behaviors so like birds that's the first example we can definitely think of uh, birds can be incompatible uh, with one another certain different other types of birds because of their mating behaviors, like singing a different mating song or mating call, and they can recognize that and realize, yeah, that's, that's not the bird I'm trying to mate with. So let's look at some post-zygotic barriers. So there are a lot less to go through here. And like we said, post-zygotic is, you know, after the two individuals have mated, and this is kind of what happens after to prevent, you know, further mating or offspring formation. So the first one we have here is hybrid inviability. And it's a bit blunt of me to write just death, but essentially that's kind of what happens. Um, you know, the, the hybrid or the offspring doesn't actually survive to, to live. 
um, maybe it either doesn't get born or if it does, it will uh, pass away very soon after because of health reasons. So we see that in some animals. There's also hybrid sterility. So obviously, um, we, we know what sterility is in humans and this can happen in animals as well. And if two um, individuals mate their offspring or that hybrid between them from different species, for example, that offspring might be able to be born, might be able to be somewhat healthy, but they will have an inability to reproduce. And an example of this is the mule. I'm sure that's a very common one that we know of. And we also have something called a hybrid breakdown. So essentially what this is, is it's similar basically to these two above. It's really any of these two cases, but it's skipping kind of a generation. So maybe somehow we do get an offspring, but the next one will be sterile or the next one may pass away. So that's it for today's video. Be sure to like this video if you found it helpful. Um, comment with any questions or any other videos that you would like to see from us. And make sure to subscribe for more Brain Boost content.